Hello everybody, welcome back to the Saint stream on this wonderful Saturday afternoon. I'm Theo, no one has the Holy Juan, I'm joined by Wyatt. A pleasure to be here, it's first time on the desk here with you Theo, and I'm looking forward to what we got in store today. Yeah, and we have a fun day of action today, we have Overwatch Homecoming, it's going to be our Saints starting off the playoffs against Moonrun Park, and it's going to be... Uh, very favorable matchup for them. They did finish the season 8-2, and two, finished on a very strong note, and they're going to be looking to go deep into this tournament today. Absolutely. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, one of the top seeds currently, and we're looking to do well in this best of five single elimination. If we get past this match, we're looking for another match, either again Penn State or Grandview, and we'll look forward to that. Absolutely, and you know, Saints are going to be a big favorite. Their lineup for today is going to be Squeak on tank, Noxious and Razor on the DPS roles, and it's going to be Redix and Soaks on support. They've had the same uh, lineup for the entire season. Uh, no substitutions, no nothing. So their chemistry has grown, and you know they've been together for a couple of years now. Looking like one of the top teams in collegiate, so they'll definitely look to go deep into this tournament. And they've been playing the um, Arisa comp. That's kind of been their main uh, thing. But on these dive maps. They've looked really good with Noxious going over to that Widowmaker. So I wouldn't be surprised if they pick some uh, maps like Gibraltar, like uh, like some long-range maps where they can utilize that, uh, uh, that Winston uh, sniper combo. And I think that's going to be their key to success today. Absolutely. Well, as you mentioned, like this roster has stayed together for a long time. So they didn't have any substitutions. They know each other. They know how to play with each other. And I'm actually going to be interested today to see what the supports are. Because talking about those supports, I think in the current meta, like we've got, there were some debuffs to Orisa, obviously. Not too influential, but still notable to recognize. But I'm going to be excited to what they see, uh, what they pick on the support side. Yeah, from what we've seen so far from them, it's been mainly Juno. Brig or on a Brig. Uh, Brig is kind of a staple alongside Juno because just both those ultimates are so strong for those team fights. But yeah, I think they're going to stick to mainly those three supports. I'd be pretty surprised if we saw anything outside of those supports. And uh, on the DPS line, I think that might be the interesting thing here. We've seen them play Cassidy Genji, Ash Genji, but on the long range map, they've played uh, the Widow Genji. So Genji, kind of something Razor has definitely been playing a lot this season and paired up with that Orisa, both those ultimate combos can win you an easy team fight. Absolutely. Like that Genji is an absolute menace. When you can get in there and you can cause some damage, you can cause some kerfuffle within the other team to make them a little unorganized and then your rest of your team can follow up on that it just helps everybody as a team yeah and the saints you know they had a really good uh, swiss stage going eight and two one of the top top teams i think only one or two teams went to nine and one so they were there at the top of the top now they're going to be playing a lower seed what do you think is going to be their real big key to success to having a good start to these playoffs i would say just Working together as a team, like that's the simplest thing you can say is to success, just working together, making sure like you don't go into this match thinking, okay, this isn't one of the bigger threats that we faced before. We can just wing it. Not going in thinking like we can just play our game and we can just like pure aim it and we don't have to rely too much on that team comp or we don't have to rely too much on the communication because when you let that down and when you let that fall that gives them the opportunity to come in and say we've got better communication we've got better team comp we're going to roll you guys yeah I mean I was talking to their head coach before the Zay has done a great job with this roster and he said they were feeling uh, very very confident about these first few matchups you know uh, second game of the day is obviously going to be uh, a lot harder because uh, the longer you go in the playoffs the harder the games become but nonetheless uh, their head coach seemed very confident and they were scrimming in there right before this match they're getting ready they're definitely not weighing it and they're looking to take this one home Absolutely. I'm confident and I'm, I'm confident like what I've seen from them before, how they've played, how the DPS have done so well on that side. And as you said, like when they've gone for those longer maps, they've picked like those Widows and they've also picked like those Cassidy's. And obviously comparing that and pairing that with the Genji, I think that's a potent, potent composition that can win them many, many games. Yeah, and it is going to a best of five. It was best of three for the entire uh, Swiss stage, but now for the playoffs, it is going to best of five and it is single elimination. So one loss, one bad uh, series, and you're out of here. And I, I don't think Saints want that, want to see that happen anytime, but especially if that's really on into the tournament. Yeah, that's why I keenly mentioned, like, they have to focus on, and as you said, like, they've got this down. The coach is confident that they can communicate and that they can get this first win. But if they lose that, 
We're done for the day for Overwatch. No more Overwatch for the day. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be important for the Saints to lock in. You know, they're expecting a 3-0. I'm going to go with the same kind of scoreline. What do you think is going to be their first uh, first game scoreline? As someone who hasn't seen a Moore Park play before, like, obviously talking to you before this and talking to Dan about this as well, it seems like we don't know a lot about them. We don't know if they're a good team. We don't know if they're a necessarily bad team. All we know is that the Saints have a prediction on this, and then the Saints are confident in this. I would I would agree with you on the part of the 3-0, but I wouldn't also leave it to a full 3-0. I would say maybe a 3-1, maybe even a 3-2, but I'd be confident in putting my, my balls in the basket that say that it's going to be a 3-0. Yeah, I mean... I've played Overwatch, I've played against some stronger teams, and when you play against a team that's just a lot better than you, it's kind of hard to get out of your spawn. So <laughs> hopefully Saints can be on the uh, upside of that kind of trade. But, you know, uh, let's take a, maybe talk about the maps a little bit. First map, what do you think is the map that we're going to see? I'm expecting uh, Lee Jong personally, which is pr pretty popular first map, but what do you think we'll see? I would have to fully agree with you on that. I think Legion is a popular map. I've seen them play this map so many times, and I think I think that they can get it done. Yeah, I mean, I must agree with you. We're going to go to a very, very quick break before we're going to start the game, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with game one.
Systems online. Weapons ready. Welcome back, everybody. We are just about to get into game uh, one. St. Clair College against Moon Park Ronin. And we're going to be playing it on OAs. You can see Moon Park going with a Mauga type of composition against the Saints here. That's a very interesting play. I haven't seen that too much lately in the meta. So let's see how Saints decide to play against this type of composition. Razor is going to be poking out. Saints have a lot more poke than the Mauga, but once it gets up close, could it be dangerous? You can see they're going in with the venture. The Juno ring is used on the right side. Maugop is able to get on top of that Cassidy, but he is going to be able to stay alive. So low health bars for the Saints, but they take down the tank and the rest are going to fall here. Noxious looking for the shots onto the Tracer. Can't find it. Will be able to stay alive. The Saints will clean up and take the first team fight. Yeah, as you mentioned, Theo, like, seeing that Mauga off the bat, like, I have never seen that before. Like, I was looking at the Saints to see what we were doing, like, supports-wise. Obviously, you called it. We got that Juno. We got that Brig. And then they went for that Cassidy and Genji comp. And then the Aura up, obviously. But on the side of Moon Park, like, that Mauga, I, I don't know what to expect from this. I don't know what their strategy is here. Yeah, they just want to get up close and try and burn through the Orisa, but I think Orisa is way tanky. Low health bar here for the Mauga. Gonna have to stop his push early, and Soaks is gonna be the first one to fall. Now Saints have to go in quickly and try and find the trade, but I don't think they'll be able to find anything. They do find the Brig. Can they find anything else? No, Razor's gonna fall, Squeak's gonna fall. It's gonna be a team fight win from poor Moon Park, because Soaks got a little too aggressive there. You know, as much as I doubted it, I think it's working for him. We saw that Arissa try and get in there to do some damage, but that Mauga just laid down the law and just was able to shred through them. And then, as we saw, the rest fell after that. Yeah, getting one pick can just snowball these fights so hard. Now a lot of ultimates going to be on uh, line four for the side of the Saints. Moon Park, though, going to have that beat drop, which could cancel out a lot of the damage here. The Orisa ult should be coming through soon. There's Juno ult, there's the Brig ult, there's the Orisa ultimate. Everything being used. The beat drop comes out. Nox is going to use the High Noon as well. It's going to die, but Razor gets a pick onto the Juno in, in return. The Brig rally comes out from Soaks. Can he find any picks here? The Tracer gets one shot there. Mauga now on a low HP, they find the Brig, they find the Mauga. Another team fight going over to the Saints. That was beautifully played by the Saints, beautifully. We saw Squeaks and we saw Radix pick up the last two there, and that was just a bash of ultimates. We saw a bunch of ultimates from the Juno to the Brig to the High Noon, and we got some damage in there. We had some picks here and there, but Saints cleaned up. And now it's going to be Noxious on the Hanzo. It's an interesting swap as well. Gonna look to find those one shots now as Hanzo did get a buff not too long ago. Back to the point where he can one shot any squishy. This Mauga is just playing very aggressive on low HP. Has to be careful here. Has the ultimate ready as well. Point is going to get taken. Squeak though will get on the point and Geyer goes down. There's the Dragon Blade four fall instantly for the side of Moon Park. It's a clean ace for the Saints. That was beautifully done on the Saints side. So seeing that Hanzo in there, I wasn't too sure if they were going to get any damage in there, get any picks, but we saw two picks out there from the Saints, and it was beautifully executed to keep the point on their side. And now it's last fight territory for Moon Park. They switch over to the Orisa, and they get a Reaper on their side as well. I don't know how good that Reaper swap is going to be, but they need to touch at this point. Let's see. Squeak is going to allow this Orisa to touch. Going to look to push through that Brig. Is on one HP. Can they find the kill onto the Brig? Yes, they do. Squeak is able to find that one. Redix finds a second. Squeak finds Tori. And now it's just clean up for the Saints. This Orisa and Reaper, the last two alive. And it's going to be just the Reaper. It will just stay alive with his life. It's going to be the first round going over to the Saints. Yeah, Saints closing out the game strong. That we, they had to counter something against that Mauga. Like, but honestly, I didn't think that Mauga was too beneficial on the side of Moor Park. Like, they had that first engagement, I think, which was very beneficial. Like, they got through them. That Orisa didn't know what to do off the start. But then they just kind of panicked at the end and kind of switched over to that Orisa to just try and match what the Saints were doing. And we're going to see the Saints get a little creative, I think, here. They might go for a ball, Briggs, and Com composition now this is a very high skill ceiling type of composition and you can see they're feeling very good against a moon park ronin if they're going to go for this i'm going to be excited to see this we've got two dive tanks on either side we've got the hammond and we've also got the winston i'm excited to see what happens here and as you said like these are high it's a high school ceiling players that we're looking at here i'm looking to see what the saints pull out in this 
Yeah, I mean, the Zenyatta is going to be kind of the big key in this team comp. Can the Zenyatta stay alive against the dive of a Moon Park? Should be pretty hard against the Winston and Adventure, but it looks like the high ground will be taken by a Moon Park. A Ronin saying it's just going to be able to stay and contest here. It's going to be Razor, though, finding the opening pick onto the Ash. Nice shots there. Saints going to have a big advantage heading to this fight. Those stickies could be dangerous. Squeak finds Geyer as well. It's going to be a very, very easy team fight win for the Saints. Absolutely, and as you said, that Zenyatta on that point there was key for them getting the first point. And that first pick was absolutely beneficial as well for them getting this. Yeah, Moon Park kind of falling apart here. You can see they're going to go for the Wrecking Ball on, uh, I don't know, they're struggling with their options here as the Razor is playing very aggressive alongside Noxious in the back lines here. No recall now on this Tracer. Noxious going to recall as well. The dive comes in, the Echo looking to find a shot and the Wrecking Ball gets annihilated by that Discord Orb. It's another nice pick for the Saints as the huge slam comes in from Squeak, finds one, finds a second. The cleanup is nice. Saints are starting to roll. Yeah, no, you can't let the Saints get this far in. As you said, like, we're looking at a game where they just be in their spawn. Like, you can't let that happen. More Park's got to get something out there. They've got to change something up. Or they got to make something happen so that they can get out of their spawn area and get on that point that's now at 50%. Yeah, it's going to be a copy onto the Widowmaker from Razor in the back line, trying to find some shots. Doesn't hit the Ana. Razor, oh my goodness, Razor, what are we aiming at? Oh my goodness, he hasn't hit a single shot. And he's just going to stop. He gave up. That is a travesty for the Saints. But in the meantime, they still win the team fight. And you know, Moon Park just can't get anything going. Yeah, I see. If that were me on that side and I had that, <laughs> I would have been done. Done the game, close it out. But we see the Saints pulling back a little bit and they're getting some kills there. Yeah, very easy team fight. But again, they just have the ultimates and Moon Park cannot get out of their spawn. You can see C or C or V trying to go for the Widowmaker and find a pick, but. I mean, I don't remember the last time that Moon Park have gotten a kill on the Saints here. 90% of ticking. They're gonna get onto the point. Gear will get some touches. They nano boost the Widowmaker on the right side. Squeak finds a couple, but Tori finds one alongside Justin, but it's gonna be a C9 coming up from Moon Park. St. Clair take the first map with relative ease. Yeah, and I'm feeling less confident in my choice of saying that Moon Park might have something here. Moon Park might be able to pull something through. Those first two grounds, obviously 100% on the Saints side. The Saints did this excellently. They executed well. I had no idea what Moon Park was doing for most of those parts. They had some creative compositions, like obviously as we saw that Malga out first, and they just couldn't get anything too, like abnormal to kind of mess up the Saints in that sense. Yeah, I mean, and the Saints, you could see how confident they are. Uh, played two different compositions and just looked absolutely full. Other than one team fight where they might have went a bit too deep, they just looked unstoppable. Uh, what are your biggest takeaways from that first map? I was actually excited to see how the Wrecking Ball played in that composition. As someone who hasn't seen too much competitive play, like looking at that and seeing, okay, what are they going to do with this? As you mentioned, like very high skill ceiling character to master and to learn. So I was excited to see and happy to see that the Saints pulled out a win with that composition, with that Wrecking Ball. Yeah, and I think that's going to be something of things to come. It is best of five, so still a lot of Overwatch to play, but if it keeps going in the same kind of direction, I don't think this series is going to be uh, too, too long. And, you know, the Saints just looked amazing. They every, uh, Mechanically, strategy-wise, they were just shutting their opponents down. And on the flip side, they just couldn't get anything going. Saints just kind of stood in their spawn and didn't let them leave. Yeah, the only part that I could see Moon Park getting some advantage in there was near the start when they I had that Melga, and it kind of, it, to me, it kind of looked like a shocker to St. Clair. It was like, huh, we've never seen that before. But I think av after that, there wasn't another moment that I can recall where Moon Park had the advantage over the Saints, either, either on point or with ultimates or anything like that. It seemed very 
on the side of St. Clair for that whole game. Yeah, I mean, the Saints just showed no signs of slowing down. And it just felt like Moon Park never really had an actual team fight. It was like one person died here, one person died there. And the Saints on the flip side, you could see Squeak on that wrecking ball just causing havoc, slamming anyone. And the DPS were always there to follow up. So I think the target priority from the Saints is just a lot better so far in this series. I think that's their biggest key to victory so far. Absolutely. And I mean, like, as you were saying, like, Moon Park was overextending in some of those parts. Like, the Malga was just going at it, going in the background. And it didn't seem too helpful for them. Being that aggressive against the Saints didn't seem to benefit them in taking the point at all. Yeah, and we're going to be getting into the second map uh, shortly. So, uh, shortly, sorry. And it's going to be uh, the Saints yet again trying to get a quick uh, victory here. But I think Moon Park definitely have to switch something up in the second map. What do you think is something they could do to maybe give a uh, Saints a run for their money? Well, you said it beautifully, Theo. They got to do more team fights. Like, as I agree with you, I didn't see many moments in that map, in that game, where Moon Park was playing as a team, where they were playing together, they were in sync. It was more so one or two characters were in the back line or pushing up very much to try and get, like, that hero play where they just kill the entire team. I think Moon Park's got to pull it back, got to talk to each other a little bit more, and then play more as a team to get through the Saints. Yeah, and it's going to be Control here, the newest Overwatch game mode. We didn't see any of of this in the Swiss around so in the elimination now stages we're gonna be able to see this map type come out and let's take a look at the composition Zarya coming out for Moon Park that is a very very hard team composition to pull off and you can see Saints on the flank instantly getting into the back lane but not getting too much off the bat there's also a Junkrat on the side of Moon Park a very uh, Interesting type of team composition. Arissa going to push the Zarya out. Squeak though, has to be careful not to go down. It's a good start for Moon Park. Soaks gets taken out to 1 HP. Redix is on low HP now on the next speed ring though. Squeak looking to get something done. Or the Zarya will get taken out really low. Squeak though, maybe getting a bit too aggressive. Will be to stay alive on 50 HP, however, as a couple picks come in from the Saints. Noxious does fall down, but Redix does a great job of keeping Squeak alive. And it looks like the first point might be going over to the Saints. Yeah, the Saints executed that beautiful as we saw the Genji and we saw a couple other characters in there getting in that back line and surprising Moon Park. That's what Moon Park should have tried to done in last game. Moon Park should have tried to get in behind with a team and cause some damage. Yeah, and the chase is going to come through here if this Zarya does fall down, which it looks like she will. That is going to be a travesty for Moon Park. All that Zarya charge is now lost to Saints. Rolling to the second point. It's another clean ace for them. And Moon Park just cannot slow them down. Yeah, I'm seeing on the side of Moon Park, we've got to switch to the Cassidy, which could be beneficial, but I'm not too sure about this Zarya play. I mean, I'm not too sure about it either. Arissa, in the current moment, does really good against the Zarya. It's going to be point D cap. Now, Saints can get this E point captured. That is the end of the map. And it's going to be finally an early pick coming out from Moon Park Noxious. Getting a bit too greedy there. CVRE getting a nice shot. It will give Moon Park maybe a chance at this next team fight, but the ultimates for the side of Saints might be too much to deal with. I know, looking at the comparison of ultimates here, we've got Cassidy and John Crowd on the side of Moon Park, but then we've got both supports on the side of St. Clair, plus the Genji that just came online right now. I think St. Clair can take this next point easily with those four alts now. We've got the Orsa. Yeah, the Juno ultimate's gonna come out. So much damage. Orisa ult comes out. The Cassidy is bubbled with the ultimate, but both DPS fall for Moon Park, and it's gonna be a clean sweep for the Saints here, but Jazlyn finds a couple with that Junkrat tire. The Brig Rally will be used. Tori finds a third, and it looks like Moon Park will actually be able to turn around off the back of that huge Junkrat tire. Tori taking down Squeak was an absolute turning point for that match. If they didn't get that and that tank was still on that point, I don't think if Moon Park would be able to bring that back. And I'm quite surprised by the fact that Soaks still has that rally online. I'm surprised the Saints didn't try and close out the map right there and then. But that Junkrat tire was definitely a crucial reason to why this map is still going. You can see they're trying to keep CRB open. The Graviton Surge comes out onto zero people. Saints going to happily back up out of that one. The Juno ultimate's used as well. But they've gotten no kills from it. Not even much space from it. Saints all sitting on full HP. Looking to take this point. D yet again and no charge on the Zarya the rally's gonna come out and they go trade backline squeak 
finds a couple early picks. Saints should be easily able to capture this point D. As we're going to look for point D yet again. Yeah, the comparison on that side, like, we could see Moon Park to St. Clair. St. Clair just had so many more ultimates to play with there. And that Brig was absolutely beneficial. Absolutely turning the tables for them on that point. And they're going to take this D point. Yeah, relatively easily. Now again, they're going to look to close out the map here. This Junkrat has been putting in decent work. If he can get another tire, I mean, that was their win con last time. But this time, it's going to be Squeak and Razor, who both have their ultimates online. I expect to see that combo coming out. Red X also very close to that Juno ultimate. And Noxious has the Venture ultimate. Going to get taken down very, very low. Is able to stay alive. Point unlocks in five seconds. As Saints get their way onto your Squeak. Just Stuck in the trap, I think, for a second there. Pops of the gold, looking to stay alive. Uses the ultimate to stay alive. Juno ultimate comes out. Genji ultimate comes out. A couple early picks for the Saints. Gary gonna fall as well to Noxious as Saints obliterate Moon Park. They only need a couple ticks to close out the map. And I think it's going to come in in just a second. Junker Tire does come out, but it's just not in time. Saints take the second map with relative ease. Yeah, that second map was taken very easily. As you said, like, Moon Park just didn't seem too composed there. And St. Clair on their side, they were really organized. They were really composed. We're seeing Soaks here. Like, as you mentioned earlier, in that team fight where we thought they were going to take it on the last point, Soaks decided to take the, like, discipline himself and keep his ultimate so that he could use it for a further fight. And that benefited them in the future. Yeah, absolutely. A nice play there by Soaks. And it's going to be Saints putting themselves on match point up 2-0 in this series and looking very very strong so far um what do you think are their keys to victory to close out the series i think they just got to keep playing their game like we've seen it we've seen it with these two maps like saint Clair is absolutely rolling this team like they've gotten some points moon park absolutely where they've given the saints a fair fight in their ultimates or in their team composition but the main part that i'm looking at on the side of moon park is mainly like their dps like we saw in that game we saw one dps switching from like cassidy to um farah to a bunch of different other characters as well and i think that's part of the where the team composition comes in where they're not too composed they're not too organized they're not dedicating to say okay this is the team comp stick to it they're kind of com was the word they're kind of like getting inside each other's heads a little bit yeah and i think the zarya pickup was not very strong into the orissa it's just you don't do enough damage to kill orissa it's hard to maintain your charge and as soon as you take one spear you kind of blow up so i think Mupar are going to need a lot of changes to have a chance in this map three but saints once they get rolling they don't really slow down yeah no the saints are rolling and i think they're going to continue rolling like third map in any game is normally where the team that's on the losing side gets into their own heads or just subconsciously it convinces themselves like okay we're done or else like they decide to pull back and decide to come together as a team like this is that make or break moment this is the moment where they can bring a reverse sweep or they just try to keep doing the, like the smallly creative things that they're doing introducing like that Zarya or introducing that um wrecking ball yeah next map is going to be hollywood a very very good map for the saints i would say they can play the winston composition on that second point you can go for those long range snipers like widowmaker and ash so it's going to be a very very good map for them and i'm excited to see it if i had to guess the uh, first point they're going to be starting on the defense they might go for an arista composition but i would not be surprised if we see a winston Yes, I wouldn't be surprised otherwise, but uh, what I am excited to see on this map is the Widow composition, is to see that Widow out there and to see those picks getting out there. I know we saw in the first map, I think um, Raze needs a little bit of redemption. He's not playing Widowmaker. <laughs> He's not playing Widowmaker. Oh. We've got Noxious on the Widowmaker, though. We are seeing the Widowmaker on this map, so I'm going to be interested to see how that influences the game as a whole. Yeah, it's going to be the Saints on the defense first, as expected. They definitely want to find this full hold, but if it does get captured, I mean, that second point is where they will succeed most, as they will be going for the Winston Brig on a Widowmaker Ash composition. Kind of hinted at it a little bit pre-game that they might go for this. It looks like Moon Park might be going for a bit of a funky composition themselves. They have a Widowmaker. They have a Junkrat. There's no way they walk out on the Roadhog, but it's possible. And I think they will. They have Roadhog, Moira, and Mercy. I mean, if you ever wanted a funky composition, there it is. And there's an opening pick for Gyre onto Razor. 
Absolutely, as I mentioned it, this is what I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see the Widowmaker. I'm excited to see the aim here. I'm excited to see the headshots. That's what I want to see. And just as you mentioned, like, this is a funky Kong. I think even at the start, and as we're seeing it right now, we've got the Mercy and Moira, two characters that I haven't seen at all in this game. Yeah, and it looks like the first team fight might be going over to Moon Park. A couple picks early for them. Tori on one HP here. Oh, nice hook there onto Squeak. But the Saints are finding their trades back. No healers left alive for Moon Park. Ronan here. They went for something funky. They found some success. But once Saints were able to uh, stabilize, the fight went in their favor. I think Moon Park had a moment there where they kind of caught Saints off guard. Like that Roadhog was doing some damage. But now they switched off that Mercy for the Ana, which I think is a better pick. And then we're going to see Nauseous take that Junkrat. Yeah, now Noxious against this type of team comp is going to be absolutely unleashed on this Widowmaker. Another shot onto Tori. Nice one there. And Gare is going to fall down there to Razor. CVRE going to fall on the Roadhog. And uh, I'm pretty sure CVRE was their DPS player, if I'm not mistaken. Now switching over to the tank girl on the Roadhog, trying to find something from the look of things. Saints just sitting comfortably in the spawn of Moon Park. Yeah, no, this is where Moon Park's got to pull together, I think, because they're playing too many characters that are like solo characters that don't play together like decently as a team, as well as Saints does right now with their composition. Noxious though will fall down. Tori on the Moira should probably go to the spawn and try and spawn camp Noxious. That's what I would personally do in uh, this scenario. But it looks like Tori's just gonna go on to the point. I don't think there's any more life left in this. Moira will be going down. Nice defense again from St. Clair. They've gone half the time bank for Moon Park already gone. Yeah, Moor Park have got two more minutes to make something happen. Honestly, if this were me, I think we should switch out the Roadhog. The Roadhog <laughs> doesn't seem to be doing too much. Seems to be more of a solo player. Like, even going for something maybe even as Winston or maybe an Orisa to get in there, I think would be beneficial for them. I mean, you talked about the fact, let's go into this team fight. It's going to be Squeak diving into the backline, but against Roadhog Bastion, I don't think that's uh, somewhere you want to enter anyway. Noxia is going to find Tori on the flip side. Nice juggle here from Squeak onto the Ana Razor picks up the Widowmaker, this Ana is getting absolutely battered. Nice juggle there from Squeak. Another easy team fight win for the Saints. Yeah, no, this is seeming too easy for the Saints at this moment. I think Moon Park have got to pull something out. They've got to switch up some kind of composition within the last minute that they've got. Because in that last team fight, we saw it very beneficial on the side of St. Clair. We didn't see too much coming out from Moor Park. But we've got some alts on the board now. And we're going to see both Widowmaker ultimates use. Soak's going to use that ultimate as just a walk in the park for the Saints here. Now Guy are going to fall down as well. This on a Roadhawk want to try and make something happen. Soaks does fall down in the end, but with this Roadhawk composition, they don't have too much speed to get back to this site. And Roadhawk, though, is still alive somehow. Bastion going to use that form squeak. Has to be careful here. It's a nano boost used as well. Onto the Zenyatta. Trying to find some picks there. Bastion, well, it's going to come out onto the Ana. Should be able to kill the Ana, actually. And the Widowmaker. So actually, Moon Park Ronin should more than likely be able to capture this point here. Unless Razor can pull off an insane play here. Solo, single hand should be able to find the Widowmaker in just a second here. There it is. That's one pick, but Squeak falls on the flip side. No recall left for Razor. Gonna look for a sticky here. Can he find it onto the Ana? No, he's not gonna be able to find it. I think that point's gonna be going over to Moon Park Rodin as the Saints go for one final contest. They find a pick onto the Zenyatta. Lucio, though, will fall down. Numbers are coming back strong for the Saints, but another pick onto Soaks has now no healers left for the Saints. They find the Doomfist. It's gonna be a couple more picks going over to the Saints. The Widowmaker is able to get on the point. Can't squeak. Find that one. He's on 1 HP. No, he won't. Noxious. Gonna find one. Finds the headshot onto the Ana. Gonna find another shot onto the Ana. Can he find the headshot on the Lucio? Yes, he does. Noxious with an amazing play to close out the round. You know, I said it at the start. This is what I was excited to see. I was excited to see that Widow come out. And I was excited to see this Widow close out this round. Zero. That was a great, great play there from the Saints. And now, more than likely, they will be looking to close out the map here on their attack. You know, it seemed after that Bastion Ball that Moon Moor Park had that point that they were able to captivate on that. But the Doomfist, the Widowmaker, and the Lucio as well, I would say, on the side of St. Clair were all beneficial to them taking that point. Yeah, now, what do you expect to see from the Saints on this attack? 
I would expect, from my own experience, I would expect something either like similarly what they've been doing before, or I would even expect like an Orsa to come out. But I don't think we're gonna see that. We might see a Doomfist. I say the Orsa because I would expect the Saints on this side to play a character that can get in there with their abilities and cause some damage. And I think Orsa is one of the characters to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think the Saints are just feeling very confident with how last round went. And it looks like Moon Park yet again will be going for the Roadhog composition. I think it's all falling apart for them here as the uh, Saints will have all the mobility needed to take the high grounds and take the point. Yeah, no, Moore Park is not looking composed here. They're not looking like they have some organization. They're not looking like they got a plan going into this. They're more so thinking like, let's play characters, let's play what we know best, let's play what we can play best, and let's see what happens. And then, as you said, on the side of St. Clair, they're just feeling it. They're just having some fun. They're just playing some comp. They're just playing some regular games to them. Yeah, let's see how the Saints decide to play this push. It's going to be a Life Weaver as well for Moon Clark and a Torbjorn. Interesting composition coming out from them. This Roadhog is going to get pulled away, but Nox just finds the opening pick onto Gear. Tori gets taken down to one hit point, but will stay alive as there's a Soldier on the point. Adrad will fall down. Nice cleanse there. From Renix keeping everyone alive. Noxious is just killing the everybody on the enemy team with ease. Squeak falls down. Tori falls as well. Soaks is just 1v1ing. The Roadhog as Geyer falls again. And Soaks finds that kill. That's going to be the point go over to the Saints. And they're going to take the series 3 0. You know. I feel embarrassed to say it now that I had my, my hopes up for more park. I had my hopes that they could take at least one game on the side of Saints. But as you said, as you knew, Saints had this in the bag. Yeah, and the play of the game from Noxious, it's going to be towards the end of this first round where he just went the ballistic. He's able to find the headshot onto the Widowmaker there. Headshot on Ana finds the cleanup there. And this Lucio had a chance for his team, but beautiful shot from Noxious Saints take the series 3-0 and they move on in the knockout stages. Absolutely, and that just means we're going to get some more Overwatch for you guys today, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a fun day. We're going to be seeing what we'll play next, and what are your thoughts on the finish on that map? I mean, about as expected after the 2-0, you could definitely see the opponents just fall apart. The Roadhog, that's kind of like waving the white flag, just playing for fun, and the Saints took full advantage of it, closed out the series as expected in 3-0 fashion. And, you know, let's take a look at uh, the bracket because I think this match might have finished a bit earlier than some other matches. So we're not going to be going into next game just yet. But you could see the Saints are actually uh, Grand View University already finished their match and they won 3-0 as well. So you, this next matchup between the Saints and Grand View University should be an interesting one. Both teams coming off of 3-0s should be an exciting matchup. Now, I know we talked about it before that this first game against Moore Park was a more of like a comfortable game for St. Clair, that they had this in the bag. What are you thinking now, knowing that their next matchup is going to be against Grandview? Well, I talked to their head coach, Zane. He said that the second matchup against uh, who he said Grandview would probably going to be their opponents. He said definitely a capable team and a way more of a threat than uh, Moore Park, but still feeling as confident as ever. I don't think uh, they're expecting anything less than a 3-0, but if uh, if Grandview takes a, takes a map, it wouldn't be that surprising. Yes. Now, what do you think on, I want to ask you this question, what do you think on the side of their mental going in from this game to the next game? Playing this calm game, playing this like chiller game where they didn't have to put so much stress on themselves to come together as a team. Do you think that's going to affect them at all coming into the game, or do you think they're going to pull it right back and get a win? Uh, they're not. They're a very momentum-heavy team, and, you know, they're expecting a 3-0. The fact that they got that 3-0 with relative ease is definitely what they expected, so I think they're definitely going to be feeling confident. It uh, didn't seem like anything tragic happened that game. Uh, they had good... Uh, good they were having a good time at the end of the day, you know, having fun, playing some funky compositions. So they're definitely going to be feeling confident, but hopefully they're not feeling overconfident. But we'll find out how confident they are. We're going to throw it to a very short break, but we'll be back with the second matchup of the day whenever it's ready.